Well then, uh, also a warm welcome from my side. Um, it's amazing so many people in the room. I didn't expect that, so there must be a lot of interest in open access to publications and also open data. Um, I'll talk about, uh, not about Ariadna, because uh, uh, Julian just introduced that. Uh, maybe have a look at the portal, uh, do a little bit of research. Uh, can easily find that by going through to first to our website, our Yarden infrastructure, and then you have the link to the portal and do a bit of searching and uh, have a, an impression of what it looks like. Uh, well, my talk is about first about, I'm only talking or mainly talking about open data, uh, not about uh, publications because that's a bit different story. <laughs> I always find open data, uh, open access publications rather easy to do huh? because either you have published your publication in an open access journal, you can self archive your paper somewhere on your website or in a repository. But open data <coughs> is really a different story. So I will address a little bit the criteria what, are, what, is, what are, are open data, some expectations around that, current drivers for open data, and also. Then also, of course, the barriers for this uh, open data sharing or open data publication. And my main point is that um, if individual researchers, individual research groups, institutes don't benefit from sharing the data, there will be uh, difficult to convince people to share it. Uh, even if there are, there is of course the trend uh, by uh, research funders to, to, to demand open data, uh, but you can also do it very the very easy way. So not really the state of the art and so on. And all, it also depends if there is really uh, a state of the art uh, data repository, a data archive in your country, like in, in the UK. Uh, there are many countries around Europe and elsewhere that don't have this kind of, of, of state-of-the-art uh, archives. Um, then I will also address a little bit the, the, the question of data reuse, because if the data is not reused, what's, what's the whole point about it? Huh? And only via reuse and that, that other researchers uh, cite reference your data, you get some credit for it, visibility, recognition, and so on. And then finally, some take uh, takeaway points. So, what, what what are open data? There is there are a lot of definitions around. So, these are some criteria. This should be accessible online. It's not necessarily without registration, of course, uh, but you should get there if you do follow the uh, conditions of the archive and so on. The data should be reusable. That means data in a report, in a paper. Uh, uh, table there with some summary data, it's not really open data there. Uh, it should be machine readable, that's implied in the, let's say, in the open formats. Uh, it should be openly licensed, that's also an important point. You can put the data in the public domain, everybody can use it, and then you can down to just uh, nothing allowed to do, copyright. So in between there are many different versions. There are these uh, Creative Commons by uh, license. Uh, there is also a special one from by the Open Data uh, uh, Initiative. Uh, the buy, the, the attribution is very important because that's the way you get the credit for. You know? So they have to attribute you, it's your data, we are using it and so on. Of course it should be for free, come for free, but uh, somebody will have to pay. There's no, no free beer here, yeah, somebody pays, it's the research funder, it's your institute, yourself, or whoever. Okay then. Um, what are the expectations around this open data? Of course, there is all, since hundreds of years, there is the, the scientific method. You have to provide evidence for your knowledge claims, for, for your statements, for, for your theory, and so on. So there is now, show us your data, uh, especially, of course, for publicly funded research data. This should be openly available, and of course, it should be preserved. Uh, the expectation of the research funders is better return uh, on the investment. This is a cost factor. You create data, it's a, maybe the, the, the biggest cost factor. Um, and the expectation is less duplication, so better expectation, <coughs> and especially reuse. The research funders want this data to be reused by others, so that's, that's a key point. 
Um, the idea behind it is, okay, we have more open data, we can do better analysis, statistical work, whatever, and finally better decision making, for example, conservation of a site, whatever. Uh, and there is uh, also the big, uh, big buzzword like big data, data-driven research and so on. Uh, the question there, okay, it's always data driven, but big data, do we have that? Uh, what do we do with that? And so on. It's not, not a point of discussion here. We had it last uh, in Istanbul at the, at the previous uh, session. Uh, there is a paper by the now missing, at the, at the moment missing, uh, Gabriele Gattiglia about open data and archaeology. It's one of the few papers about this topic. So you can, it's on the uh, archaeological information, and you can look that up if you're interested in this big data topic in the field. Well then, high policy level, level high level policies. There are many. The first one was by the OECD. There was a declaration in 2004. That was the first one about open data. Uh, the, it took about three years to have the guidelines principle for that. And from that on, there are many other others, uh, funders, <laughs> initiatives, uh, associations that want to, that have bought into this open data initiative. Um, there is a development from first, you have the open access publications, you prepare repositories for that, and now the next wave will be open data, uh, proper data, uh, archives for that, and so on. So in, in between this, and as I mentioned before, open data is a little bit uh, more complicated than, than uh, publications. Uh, if you're involved in European projects, there is this uh, open data pilot in the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, so there are, there are mandatory data management plans there. So you know, that's also uh, expected in some countries now, like in the UK and others. Uh, so you have to, from the first moment you to start the project, you apply for funding, you have already to consider how that data will be preserved, how it will become accessible, and so on. It's, that will be the next next years. You will hear that ever more. And uh, it's at some point, when you apply for funding, you'll have to do it. Well, OK, so drivers. As I mentioned, the main driver at the moment are the research funders. There are also the, 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 some journals who already ask for open data. So when you publish a paper, you have to put the, underlie, the, the data that underlies your your paper into uh, an open access uh, repository. Uh, there, is, uh, there are preparations ongo ongoing for, for data repositories. As I mentioned before, there are some lucky ones, very advanced ones, like the archaeology, uh, in the UK, the archaeology, archaeology data service. Uh, there is also one in the Netherlands. Uh, in Germany, there is the Janus initiative, uh, building a big data center for, for archaeological and other uh, data, and there are some, op some other general purpose uh, uh, repositories like Zenodo, Figshare, also Mendeley has now uh, Mendeley data. The difference really is uh, if, you, if you deposit with, with uh, ADS, they ask for quite some metadata. Hmm? It's usually it's doubling core with some, some, some uh, additional fields. Uh, these, like for example, Figshare, you can just dump your data there and give some keywords, that's not really, let's say, a good metadata. Metadata used to find, not only to find it, but to understand the data. Well, okay then. Um, <coughs> the current situation is this. The current data of uh, non-sharing behavior is that contrary to what we, what we would like the researchers to do, so proper manage the data, share it, uh, many don't do that. Uh, there are representative surveys, I wish I show some figures afterwards, that uh, show that most data remains locked away. It's on personal computers, on, on university servers that don't are with restricted access only for some people involved in the project, and so on. So, um, what is not considered that this data that usually sticks to, stays there on this servers for, for years, and then maybe it's lost, uh, would be would be very very useful for other researchers to combine with own data, maybe do different things with that data. And, so. and a matter of fact, of this uh, representative service is that uh, about maybe eight percent of researchers sometimes deposit data in the community open data repository. 
Uh, here are some figures, for example, this is from 2009, so this is uh, six, seven years ago, but 2002, uh, 1,000 and 2,000 respondents from different fields, and you can see here, <coughs> where do you s usually store your data for future use? So in a digital archive, this means 6%. There are different, so here you have computer at work, it's, it's over 80%. On, on some carriers, in addition to, to your computer, uh, another to, to third, and so on. Uh, for example, digital archive organization usually not, not publicly accessible, just uh, uh, restricted access. And so, so this is my marker here. If somebody can put it in a, in a, in a community archive, it's usually open data. Well, another one from the Science Channel 2011, so more recent, 1,700 responses, again, different discipline, uh, more from the natural sciences. So where you do you uh, have most of your data for future research? Again, here, community repository, about 8%. In our lab, 50%. University server, as I said, usually not accessible, about 40%. And so this is the typical figure. Uh, we did a survey in, in Ariadne, an online survey, and got these figures, which look well, much better. For example, here there is a, a national data archive, usually it's, it's accessible. Uh, many, almost on most projects, or in many projects, people claim that they do it very often, sometimes, so it's more. The difficulty here is that it's the definition of data is very broad. Some people understand data as the data they, they present in, in, in a paper, it's supplementary material, it can be really the raw data in the repository and so on. And the other point is that in the surveys, uh, a lot of people from the UK and also from Netherlands participated and they have this, open, uh, this data archives and it's mandatory to put it there. So we have uh, very good figures but it's not really, let's say, representative. But the other point is, if you have such data archives in your country, and if it's mandatory to put there, many more data will, 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 will flow into it. Good. Uh, barriers. The point is that there are more barriers than incentives to share the data. Um, the priority, of course, is the, is the published paper. You will get, at the moment, rather little academic reward, academic reward for, for developing, sharing data sets. There's the effort for it, so you have to format the data, you have to, to create metadata, you have to think about licensing and all that. There is also the issue of, of copyrights, confidential, sensitive data and so on. And a lot of people are of course concerned the data could be misused, misinterpreted and so on. So there is a risk. If you put data somewhere, some, somebody finds an error, so that could be that unfortunate situation. So the ratio of, of benefits and uh, risks, uh, issues, is, is, uh, works more for not sharing. Okay. Here, again, from our online survey in Ariadne, just to mention it's about 400 responses, so quite a lot of people. Uh, the, main, the main issue, there are many, the main three issues are really uh, lack of recognition and reward for sharing data. Also, the, uh, of course, the additional work to deposit the data, creating metadata and so on. So these, these kind of things. There are also, of course, intellectual property issues and so on, but the, 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 the Say the stronger it's, uh, barriers are really the. It's, in the key point, it comes down: if you don't benefit, if you don't get recognition, and so on, uh, you, you're unlikely to share. Well, there is all, has also been a, a, a survey by the European Commission about online, well, about scientific information data, and here are again some 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 barriers mentioned, a, a bit different than the one I addressed before. It's more, let's say, on the strategic level. For, for open data sharing. But again, lack of incentives comes up here, again, as the main barrier. And the key message from this is uh, we really need to think about clear benefits of sharing. So that will be the, the main topic of, of the remainder of my presentation here. So, uh, 
again, if the goal is to, to have get recognition, reward for data sharing, uh, it should be same as for publications. And the core mechanism is really reuse, recognition, citation of this published data. So what does that, it confirms that the, the value has, uh, the, the data has some values, it's, it's incentive for providing good data, it will promote further use of data and more citation. Mm -hmm. And, and in, no, it's not possible now, or not hardly possible to track reuse of data, citation of data. There, is, there, is some, there are some, some areas where that is almost possible. There is the data site initiative, there is metadata, there is a, a store for that, you can mine that and find some, but it's not representative at the moment. Also, metrics are unclear. Uh, when you publish a paper, you have this, let's say, um, impact indicators. That's, that's not there yet for, for data. So there is quite some, lot, uh, quite some work to do in the background for this. <coughs> um, there is some indication that, uh, that um, when you publish a publication with the data, it's, it, the, 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 the publication is cited more often. Mm -hmm. That's the natural sciences field, genetics and so on. There is some, well, there are a few publications are heavily cited by the proponents of open data, but there's not, not much knowledge about this around. Um, well, the question now is how can you, as a research, as a, uh, report, uh, a research group, uh, get benefits? How does it work? Well, so you have done your research, you've published your paper, there's the, there's the data, and now what do you do? First of all, uh, deposit that data in, in, in a community repository that is recognized, that is reliable, huh? that asks for good data. And so there are some criteria for that. There's, for example, the data seal of approval. For example, ADS has it. Uh, the EDPO for, uh, for Dutch archaeologists has it. Many others from other fields have this. It's a, a, a basic, uh, let's say, approval that that, that data is, is well preserved and accessible. There are other, uh, let's say, certification mechanisms. More, more uh, for example, this track here, trusted repositories, audit and certification. Very complicated to process to get that. Uh, another checklist. So this is one criteria. Uh, of course, for your data, you should get a, a, a unique persistent identifier, a DOI, a handle for that. Um, and the, the, should, uh, the repository should, of course, uh, stick to some, some standard citation. Uh, the way that's, when, when you deposit data in, in, in a repository, they, 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 you get a DOI and, 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 and and people who, who want to, to use that cite that there is, there is a standardized uh, way to cite that. Because in the end, somebody has to, will have to find that. And this citation here of the data should go into the publication like other references. Huh? It should, should not be buried in the text somewhere where you can find that, and so on. And so on. Well, as I already hinted at the question of metadata for, for data sets. Um, provide good metadata. That's my message here. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, good state-of-the-art archives ask you to, to provide good, good metadata according to some standard, uh, down from who, who created it, down to, to licensing issues, uh, licensing, uh, and so on and so on. Um, that's important uh, to find that data and to understand it to a certain level. Uh, the costs for this preparation, so we have, if you have to format the data, you have to, to create uh, metadata for it, this, this, should, this, this should be part of the, of the, of the project funding. Hmm. Well then, um, then of course you should apply an open license. Hmm. As I mentioned before, do this uh, uh, license with, uh, with, with attribution, for example CC BY, open data comments by and so on, because uh, if somebody uses your data, uh, he or she must attribute you as, as, the, as the creator of it. Then, of course, others should properly cite your data. <coughs> and there is also this uh, new publishing format. It's called the data paper. Um, data paper, there is, there is some, there is, uh, for example, uh, one uh, open data journal in archaeology. Also, uh, open uh, no uh, archaeology in 
Internet archaeology, they started a, a series for this. The point is there, you, publish, you, you put your data in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a data repository and then you describe that data. You don't publish research as such as something. You describe the, the data, you, you have, how you have created it, the standards uh, you use, and also point to, to possible reuses, what could be done with that data. That's a data paper. And uh, it's, a, it's, let's say, it's, it's in between. It's, it's, it's a good entry point to, to the data because you get more background, you understand the data better, limitations of the data, and so on and so on. Um, well, then, as an author, let's say pub you have published your data through an, an open data archive, uh, you can, of course, promote it yourself, huh? therefore, maybe on, on, on some uh, research uh, social networks and so on, like uh, academica, academia or research gate and others, um, reference it and so on. And there, maybe there is a, an opportunity to collaborate and code the papers with others that reuse the data. You can also look for that. So there are some, some ways to, to benefit from this. Finally, uh, reuse. Uh, I mentioned already at the beginning, research funders want to see reuse of the data because that that gives more return on investment for, for, for this data creation and so on and so on. But if there is no reuse, no citation of your data, there is also no recognition and reward. Of course, you may be, may be recognized in your, in your group because, one point, uh, researchers and also, of course, archaeologists share a lot of data, but only with close colleagues, with the projects, uh, working together. Uh, open data means you put your data in a repository and everybody can get to the data, can use it, attribute you as a author, cite you and so on. That's a big difference because in a, in a working relationship with others you, you have trust yeah, that, that your, 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 your data is, is not misused, that it's not misinterpreted and so on. If you put it in, a, in an open data archive, people from all of the world can come and say, okay, let's do something with that data, do something, and of course, cite it and an attribute and so on. Big difference. So, uh, there are very few studies on reuse of, of data. There are some, uh, I mentioned before already, like this people of our vision about genomics data that show that, that data is reused uh, more often when it's, of course, open and it's related to publications and so on. There's one, one study, it's from the Deep Year Project. Um, include, including archaeologists and zo zo zoologists um, that shows, um, based on, on two dozen interviews with, with archaeologists, the key point is uh, archaeologists, they are looking, when they're looking for, there's some data they could use. First they look, is there sufficient contextual information? Do I really understand that data? Um, then they ask how is the, how has the data been collected? Huh? Um, they also there are also criteria like for example, okay, what, what's the background of the researchers? And of course also good practices of the data repository. If you put data in, in uh, if you deposit it at ADS, you, you, you know there is a there is a proper process behind that, everything well done. If you put it in let's say fixed share, you have have whatever. No real background, no context, no, nothing. Well, and the big question here is, uh, if more people, more archaeologists share the data, will we have more reuse? So we have no, no evidence for that at the moment. So really, uh, get the process started. So more, more data is available, more, maybe more reuse, and more benefit from that for the, for the researcher and for the discipline. Because the idea is more data is there, you have more data to work with, come up with new ideas, new conclusions, and so on. Well, finally, take up points, uh, take away points. Um, one point is uh, for researchers. So, recommendation is to publish your, your data open access. Um, what to do? Really recognize others who do it. Uh, give recognition and really cite the data if it's useful and so on. 
research institutes, that's the point. We should reward researchers to do it. We should not put barriers into their way. This is also about changing mindset. And not only about talking about open access, open data, you really uh, need to, to walk the talk. Um, and also, of course, uh, offer skills development support for this. Data archives, uh, we mentioned Ariadne. Uh, data archives are, also are, are major, uh, actually key components of research infrastructure. Because what Ariadne is, is, is doing is this. We have uh, uh, data archive repositories in countries or in institutes, and Ariadne is built, has built the infrastructure to commonly desc describe this data according to common standards, models, and then allow for cross-searching across Europe data in, in, di in different countries, in different repositories, also institutional repositories and so on. But first, you, be, you have to get the data into that, into these archives. <laughs> well then, uh, and these infrastructure elements, so these archives really need to be sustained. Huh? There, is, there is a cost factor for this, of course. And they are also, they also should demonstrate usage impact. So actually, repositories and researchers, researchers and repositories, they are, they are partners in this game. Huh? So you, you deposit your data in, in a state-of-the-art archive uh, that is properly preserved, curated, then it's, it's, it's accessed and reused, and then you are cited. So this is the, the circle around that. Finally, research funders ever more ask for open data, and you can ask back, uh, do you give me money for doing the work? Huh? So when, when you apply for, for funding for a project, you put in already the cost for creating, from formatting it, from creating metadata, and, and, and depositing it in a, in a, in a repository, which, which also comes with a cost factor, of course. And that should be paid from your funding, from the project funding. So in, 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 for all of these uh, well, stakeholders, the key point is it's not about data management plans data management plans to comply with these policies of open access and so on. Uh, it's about really uh, making the data part of the scholarly record. It should be persistent, it should be citable and rewarded. And uh, actually, as I mentioned, we really need to, to demonstrate tangible benefits of the sharing, because otherwise we will not create the momentum for it. Well then, at the end, this presentation will be available online on, on different channels, on the website, on, on, on what, do, but where do we put it, Kate? We put it on SlideShare, everywhere, so you really can get this. And here I put some 50 references, if you're interested in the topic, can, okay, sorry, you can go through it, find some, some interesting stuff. Actually, everything I mentioned, like this, for example, this reuse study for, for genomics data, it's here, or data site. Can every find everything? It's a, a starting point to, to let's say, uh, to get into the topic. So that's it for the moment. And uh, I suggest that we uh, always allow for two or three questions because otherwise it will be presentation after presentation. The good point is at the end of, of, of our session we have 45 minutes granted for discussion. So at the end, I hope we can really create a lively discussion about different open questions and so on. So if there are any questions, please. Ask now.